Oh my goodness, how cute is this wall hanging or tabletop or however you want to use it. This spider web, it is actually quilted on and then these spiders are applique. And I just love how cute this is. It turned out so good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So today I'm going to be showing you how I put this cute table topper or wall hanging together and it came together surprisingly fast. I think you're going to love it. So let's get started on how I put this together. So let's get started on the spider web table topper or you could also make it into a wall hanging if you prefer. So to get started, I cut a square of white fabric. I cut mine to 24 and a half by 24 and a half. I have a pretty big kitchen table. So you could cut this to whatever size that you are needing. And then I cut some 2.5 inch squares to border it. So I'm gonna have a nice little scrappy patchwork border around it. I'm gonna get the border attached first and then sandwich this quilt because I am going to use the spider web design that I'm going to quilt onto the white square as my quilting. And then I'm gonna add some applique spiders on, but we are going to do this very easy. I am all about easy, so we are going to use some heat and bond and we're gonna use the ultra hold because that iron on adhesive, you don't need to um sew it in place after and since this is going to be a seasonal project it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear on it i think it is a perfect alternative to sewing on appliques if that's not your forte which it is not mine so i'm going to lay out my squares here i'm just going to alternate them every other design to border this we're going to do our quilt sandwich base this all together so that we are ready to quilt. And then I'll show you how I'm going to do the quilt design on it for following while quilting the spider web in place. All right, so I have the patchwork in place on this quilt table topper. I have it basted as well. So all I need to do now is draw out my spider web that I want to do. Now I want the middle of the spider web to start in the middle of the white area of this quilt. Now it could be cute to do it off center or however you would like to do it. I want mine to be in the center. So how I'm going to find the center of this is by folding everything in place. So I just need to make sure I have the patchwork lined up on either side, which is a little harder since I don't have this trimmed down yet. I like to do that after quilting, but as long as we're close, I'm going to be fairly happy. So what I'm going to use to mark out my spider web is a friction pen. It will heat erase. Now I'm doing the spider web in black thread, so if it doesn't completely go away, I won't be heartbroken. Just think about what you're using and decide based on that. All right, so now I'm going to take a ruler and just line it up with the corners of the table topper and mark my lines that are going to be the extensions of the spider web. So I'm just going to go to each corner so I can kind of get a good base for what I want to work through for the first step of the spider web. So I'm just gonna make sure they're all marked. And then when I mark the rest of these straight lines, I'm going to vary them. So I don't want them all to be the same width apart because, you know, I want this to be kind of a little more fun and not perfect because I'm not going to be able to sew the inner webs perfectly. So you know, I think it'll just add to the interest of it. So I'm just gonna vary the widths here and just kind of keep it fun and not so serious. And I'm just gonna keep working for this. It's gonna take me a little bit of time because there's a bunch of different sections here and I wanna make sure my lines are marked really well so that I can see them. But 
you get the idea here. All right, so now I'm gonna do the inner part of the web and I found this a little more tricky, but I just kind of curved a line up towards the center of the spider web and just kind of worked through. I couldn't get them even, so I just didn't worry about it. Um, if you have something that you could use to trace because you need yours more precise, maybe that would work for you, but it would be a little bit hard because all of the distances that I did were a little bit different. And then after I finished going around in a circle doing that curved loop, I went to a, another area of the spider web and worked through. And each time I moved down through the spider web, I kind of made it a bigger distance apart than each time. Hopefully that makes sense. But I wanted, like I said, I wanted this to not look perfect because I knew I couldn't get it perfect. So I just kind of went with that. So I just am going to keep working out from the center. So for the straight line quilting on this quilt, I just started at the center and went down to the end, raised my presser foot and kept the needle down so I could pivot around the patchwork area of the quilt and then work back up toward the center. So I just kept doing that until I had all of the straight lines on this project quilted. And this part came together really easy and looked really good. It was definitely the free motion inner part that was a lot harder for me on this quilt, but it was so worth it and turned out really cute. All right, so I have all the quilting done and the quilt is looking so cute with the spiderweb design on it. And I have it all squared up, so I'm going to start thinking about the spider appliques that I want to put on here. So what I did was I found some spiders I liked on the internet. They are actually coloring pages. So I'm going to cut these out and I'm going to, after I cut them out, I'm going to trace them onto the heat and bond. So here's the heat and bond and there's one side that has the paper on it and this is the ultra hold so I don't have to sew after. So I trace the spiders on here and then I can attach them to the wrong side of the fabric. So that's kind of how it works and this fabric is just so pretty. I think it's going to work well for the spiders and also for the binding on the quilt they'll kind of tie that all together. So if you're not familiar with how to use heat and bond, don't worry, it does come with instructions. It's actually really easy to use. I have the spiders printed in two different sizes so that I, I feel like it'll help kind of not make it look so uniform that they're in different sizes. I'm going to make one large spider and two of the small ones. And here you can see, I kind of messed up a little bit on the quilting there so I can use one of the spiders to cover that and arrange the others around in different spots if there's different areas that I would like to kind of hide. That's kind of something that's fun about applique pieces is they can kind of <laughs> be used to cover up your mistakes if you need to. And I think it'll turn out really, really cute. So once I get that done, I will show you how they look. All right, so here is the finished table topper or wall hanging however you would like to use it i am so happy with how it turned out it looks so good and this is really the perfect time to practice that free motion quilting if you would like to because no matter how it turns out it's supposed to look spooky so any mistakes just kind of i think add to the overall feeling of spookiness to the piece so it's a great time to practice that. I did just do some straight line quilting to finish off the straight lines because I did want those to be fairly straight. Um, but like I said, practicing the free motion quilting is perfect there. You could probably just straight line quilt it if you want to and just go slow. I've seen a lot of people get those curves in with a uh, walking foot on or your regular quarter inch foot. The spiders. <laughs> are just adorable. Um, 
I did just find a printout. I, I looked up coloring pages, you know, a spider coloring pages and found them. Just know that they are likely copyrighted. So don't try to sell anything with the spiders on it. If you do use a coloring page or something like that, it's for personal use. Just keep that in mind. Um, so there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you plan to make one. I really think it, it actually came together pretty fast and it's just so, so, so cute. I think this would make good, like a good, if you sized it down and made it into like a throw pillow or a decorative pillow, it would also work really well too. So a lot of ideas now with this. Okay, you guys, I am going to do a few more Halloween projects. So keep a lookout for those. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.